Now you would think that I would feel pressure being the last guy and the person between you and cocktail hour. <laughs> As a speaker, there's a lot of bad times to speak. After lunch, not so good. Sometimes in the evening and certainly before cocktail. But I found out last spring the worst time to speak. I was in Las Vegas. Remember that. I was in Las Vegas and I was speaking first thing in the morning. Well, that's bad enough in Las Vegas. But I was speaking the morning after St. Patrick's Day in Las Vegas. So I had to tell the audience that I would tone down the volume and if they couldn't handle it, they might have to leave. So this is easy compared to that. Like Justin talked about, I always like to talk with a story, but stories to me are powerful. In fact, my business tagline is transforming people and organizations one story at a time. And it's two sides of the story because what I work with people and companies on is not only figuring out what their real story is, but helping them figure out the stories that are getting in the way. And I'm gonna talk about some of those stories today. But what I love about stories is if you pay attention in your life, you can actually learn something every day. But you gotta pay attention. Betsy talked about being aware. And I'm gonna talk about awareness. So my story goes back a couple of years ago and it was involved in airline. And I was flying from Philadelphia to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Now have any of you ever been to Williamsport, Pennsylvania? It's a beautiful little town. It's a little town. And you can imagine how big the airport is. It's a small airport. And what kind of planes fly into small airports? Small planes. Small planes. Now look at me. <laughs> I have enough trouble on big planes. Small planes are a physical hazard to me. So when I get on a plane, I am very purposeful, especially on a small plane. And I always look the same. Because on a small plane, you know, they got the, the above, the overhead compartments open. So when I get on a plane, it usually looks something like this. I always have my computer with me, sadly. So I have my computer bag, and I sort of slide down the aisle like this. Because I'm making sure that I don't hit my head on one of these bins, because I've done that. And it's painful. In fact, I cut my head once, and they didn't seem to care. Go figure. Well, so I slide down the hall, or down the aisle, and I get to my seat. So it's a small plane, so what did it take me, 30 seconds to get down the aisle? That's a key fact. It was 30 seconds. I sit down, and I sort of went, whew, because the plane was pretty empty. I got a row to myself, which is beautiful on any size plane for me. I plop myself down, and immediately, the woman in front of me turns around and says, do you mind if I ask you a question? Well, I love questions. I'm open to questions. I thought it was odd that she had a question as soon as I sat down. I said, sure, what's your question? And she looked at me, totally serious, and said, are you a prison guard? <laughs> this is probably the face I gave her. I said, well, uh, no, and got to tell you, that's the first time I've been asked that question. Any particular reason? She said, yeah, I've got three reasons. And now I'm thinking, I walked 30 seconds down this aisle, and you've got three reasons that you think I'm a prison guard. Got to be good. So I said, what's number one? She said, well, you're a big guy. Well, I'm... Yeah, I'm bigger than average, and I thought, well, how does that get prison guard? I, well, the second one's got to be better, so what's number two? She said, well, you got the shaved head going on, and you look really good. Well, now I have two concerns. One is, how on earth does big and bald mean prison guard? And now I'm wondering if she's hitting on me. Because she gave me a compliment. It was nice. And I said, thank you. Next thing, I said, the third one's got to be a beauty. I said, what, what's your third reason? She said, you're really serious. And at that, I burst out laughing and said, wow, thank you for the reminder that I need to smile every once in a while. 
Well, you think, well, that's kind of a funny story, but the lesson in that for me was I started to realize that sometimes I'm way too serious and I'm way too intense looking. In fact, maybe even scary because I would think prison guards are not really happy folks. What I realized was, why was I showing her that? She was seeing that in me. That's not who I am. People that know me say, that's not who Jeff is. But boy, that's what I was showing her. So I realized, unintentionally, I was putting something out there that wasn't true. Now the good news is, I kept getting reminders of this, because that was several years ago. In fact, it's great that you're here, Mike, because this happened to me at your event last year. I'm at this beautiful, amazing um, fundraising event that Mike does, and I'm standing there at the end of the event, young woman walks by, and out of the blue says, did you used to be in the Secret Service? <laughs> I said, ah, oh, you're not smiling again, Jeff. And then, back to Vegas, right? I told you about Vegas, so I would like to get into places early. I got into Vegas early, got a chance to go to the pool, so I'm out at the pool the day before I'm speaking. And I get up to go up to my room, I'm going to have dinner, and as I stand up, this woman says, excuse me, do you know what time it is? Well, I just looked at my phone, so it was pretty funny. I remember saying, yeah, it's 407. I said, how'd you know it's 407? Well, so I just looked at my phone, and then she adds this. She said, you know, I was hesitant to ask you what time it is, because you look kind of scary. <laughs> Thinking, well, my shirt was off, that could be it. But then she said, I saw the butterfly tattoo on your back shoulder, and I figured you must be okay. <laughs> well, that butterfly is really important part of this story. Because think about it. How many guys do you know that would have a butterfly tattoo? Before five minutes ago? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. In fact, I was advised not to get a butterfly tattoo. And I won't go into the story, I'm happy to share it later, but that butterfly has real special meaning to me. That butterfly relates to my brother Greg, who passed away 34 years ago. And that butterfly is a core part of who I am. Butterflies are a core part of my whole family story. And I didn't hesitate to put that on my body because it's something about who I am. And I'm not going to take my shirt off today, good for you. But the reason I share that with you is that butterfly is a part of who I am. And I don't hesitate to show people who I am. I want people to know who I am. Because what I found is the only way I ever connect with people is when they know who I am. Not who I pretend to be. And that's why I wrote this book. When I started this book, that was not the title. If you've ever written a book, it's funny how that goes. I had another title and I wrote the book and I got done and I said, uh-oh. The title doesn't work. So I thought about what is this book about and I realized it was about unmasking because the book is about the unmasking of my life. It's about my journey in my life of going from a nice guy who wasn't always good to a good man on purpose. Betsy talked about do you know who you are? Are you being yourself? I didn't know who I was because I never gave it a thought. And part of my message to you today is start giving it a thought. Who are you? And who are you choosing to be? And even more important than knowing who you are, decide who you want to be, both personally and professionally. That's why the subtitle of this book is, Let Go of Who You're Supposed to Be and Unleash Your True Leader. And what I did when I wrote the book, I came up with this concept. I don't do it on purpose. Things come to me. And I created a whole new concept and a whole new word. And the word is living ship. Because what I realized was that people are always talking about, well, I don't know if I'm going to go talk about leadership and get some skills and strategies, or am I going to go to a personal development workshop? Am I going to go to a personal growth workshop? And I said, that's the wrong question. The question you need to be asking yourself is this single question. And if you leave here today and hear my words and leave with only this and go answer this question, I believe that the world will change for the good. Literally. And it's this question. Who are you committed to be as a leader? And the key word up there is not leader. The key word is who. 
And that's where the concept of living ship came from, because living ship recognizes that every single one of you is leading your life. Who you are and who you choose to be and how you choose to show up in your life determines how you are in your business or in your job. But more importantly, how are you in your relationships? How are you as a parent? Justin said this. I don't know if you heard it. He said the most important job he has is as dad. That was a key part of my job as a dad. And I got to tell you, I messed it up. And I'm repairing that on purpose. This is not about business leadership. This is about life living ship. What really matters to you? Who are you and are you willing to take the risk to show people who you are? Now, we're terrified by that, most of us, because to do that, it means we have to be vulnerable. And we're terrified to be vulnerable because we're afraid of being judged. That's the reality. But here's the other reality. You're already being judged. There, I guarantee you there are people in this room today that don't know you, that saw you and judged you. They did. And the question you have to ask yourself is not whether or not you want to be judged, but do you want to be judged on who you really are or who you're pretending to be? And I got to tell you something, as someone who did it for about 30 plus years, wearing all those masks is exhausting. And I wasn't really sure who I was. And I had to be careful because I had to make sure I had the right mask on for the right person, for the right situation, so I could fake it. And I had so-called relationships, but they weren't, because I was faking it. And I got to tell you, I meet so many people who are exhausted from faking it. And my invitation to them, and it is to you, is to say, I'm done faking it. I'm going to just be who I am. Just be who you are. And it's going to be good enough. Especially if you do it on purpose. So I wrote this book. And I got to tell you, it's cliche. Many authors have said that, that a book is a journey. Well, this is kind of cool because the book chronicles my journey. And yet the book itself wasn't a journey for myself. Because what happened was... I realized that not only did I have to write the book, I needed to write the book. Because writing the book and putting some of it out there, because some of the book scares me. I speak regularly and I share my story, but I realize when I write a book, everyone in the world literally can read it. I'm sure fewer than everybody will read it. But literally anybody on this planet can now read the book and they can know my secrets. That aren't secrets anymore, but they're going to know. They're going to know how I was showing up in my life. They're going to know about the parts of my life that I had shame about. A word that we don't talk about. And most of us experience shame in some way, but we carry it around. We bury it. We need to journal about it. Get it out there. I carried a lot of shame, and it impacted my personal relationships, and it impacted me as a leader in my business. So I was afraid to be who I really am. So the book talks about five core foundations to living this way. Number one is to be awake, whether that's a moment of awakening or a decision. And for me, it's a decision you can make right now. And by the way, I'm happy to share this with anyone. So if you want, just let me know. Give me a card. It says I want the PowerPoint. The second, Betsy talked about being aware. I'm going to talk a little more about that. The third is about being authentic. My butterfly story is who I am. And it's on my body. And when I take my shirt off, people get to see it. Being accountable. And this is not about being accountable to someone else. This is about being accountable to yourself. We are off course in our society, in our culture, in our business, because all we talk about is how we're going to hold people accountable. I need to do a better job of holding someone accountable. I need someone to hold me accountable. No. What you need to do is learn to be more self-accountable and build a culture of self-accountability. In a couple of weeks, on November 19th, I'm doing a workshop called Building a Culture of Self-Accountability and being clear in your commitments because we've got a serious problem in our world because we're not accountable. We don't do what we say we're going to do and we don't make clear commitments. And the last one is being actionized. And what actionized is about is saying, take what you say and I want to see it in action. I don't care what your words are. I want to see what you do and I'm going to know who you are based on what you do. And I'm going to make an assessment of you based upon what I see you do. So if you tell me you believe in this, I want to see those actions. And do it for yourself. If this is what you believe, then show up that way every day. 
courageously, vulnerably, authentically. Now, I've got limited time today, so I'm going to just touch base on two of these. I'm going to talk about this awareness issue and about accountability. The key thing with aware leaders is they go inside first. Self-reflection and internal truth-telling. And that last part is really hard, isn't it? I was really good at telling myself stories in the mirror. I could look in front of the mirror. In fact, any of you ever heard this saying? It's an annoying saying, but someone told me about five, ten years ago. They said, you know, the thing that annoys you most about other people is the thing that's most true about you. I went, well, that can't be true, because I hate people who lie. I spent months conv trying to convince them that that thing didn't apply. I said, well, no, 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 no. I do not like dishonest people. That can't be true about me. And then I kind of went, uh-oh. Oh, yeah, that is true about me. There was a big chunk of my life where I wasn't honest at all. But I wasn't telling myself the truth because I didn't want to tell myself the truth. So awareness is about going inside and telling yourself the truth. And it's also about getting feedback. Surrounding yourself with people who will challenge you all the time, even when you might not want it. And especially when you don't ask for it. Because it's easy to ask for it, because when things are going good, you say, so how am I doing? They think, oh, you're doing great. Thanks. Thanks for the help. I'm talking about the blind spots. You need the people that will help you find the blind spots, because we've all got them. Even the most aware person on the planet has blind spots. You need people around you. So this awareness as a leader is about always saying, what could you do better? Or often it's different. I put a knife up there because if you know anything about knives, knives, you can't tell if they're sharp until you start to use them. They all look sharp. But I'm talking about constantly sharpening that knife. If you know about knives, you sharpen them with a sharpening stone and you rub and you rub and it takes a little tiny thing away. That's what I'm talking about, transformation. People talk about transformation. I believe in transformation. People say, Jeff, there's no such thing as transformation. That's too big. I said, no, it's not. Transformation is this simple. It's going from one way of being to another way of being. And most of us do that every day. But we may not do it on purpose. So I invite each one of you to commit to sharpening your knife every day and surrounding yourself with people who are going to give you feedback. And here's the key. Look at the words up there. Think about who in your life have you blessed. That's an intentional word. Who have you blessed to challenge you. That means saying, I want your truth, I want you to tell me what you see, and I'm going to receive it. I'm not going to be defensive. I may disagree, but when I hear that feedback, I'm going to say, thank you. And then I'm going to go do something with it. I'm going to go sharpen. I'm going to sharpen. But you've got to bless people. People are afraid to give you feedback. People are afraid to tell you the truth, because they're not sure how you're going to take it. And the way to prove it is ask for feedback, hear it, say thank you, and then let them see you change. Because if you give someone feedback and they never change, what do you conclude? Yep, they don't want to change. And I don't trust them now. And we are lacking in trust as a foundation. And trust is a key part to this last bit about accountability. There's a couple key words up there. Accountability I've used. The key word is integrity. We don't use that word enough. And here's the reality. When you make a commitment to someone, you're putting your personal integrity on the line. When you don't do what you say you're going to do, you're out of integrity. And I don't know very many people who wake up and say, you know what, my goal today is to be out of integrity. I'm looking for opportunities to be out of integrity. I'm going to go journal tomorrow morning and say, well, I was out of integrity 17 times yesterday. That was a pretty good day. The day before was 24 times. I made 24 promises that I didn't honor. No, we want to be in integrity. But when you take ownership of that integrity and say, I am a person of integrity, and I will make clear commitments, and when I tell you something's going to get done, it will be done. And you can take that to the bank. Think about how your organization would change if that was the mindset. That when someone said, I'm in, uh, you just walked away and said, that's done. This is not about good people or bad people. It's about are you making clear commitments 
and making this a matter of personal integrity. And there's two parts to accountability I want you to think about. Most people, I've already talked about the first part, is the simple one is, do you do what you say you're going to do? That's, it's that simple, but it's not easy, is it? We make loose promises. We don't rarely to make about, we don't usually make promises. We sort of do the sure. You know, they say, hey, John, can you get that done by Friday? You go, sure. Well, you know what? Here's the problem. Sure is not a commitment. It might be for John, but for most people it's not. Sure is like, well, that means I'll do my best. I invite you to start using that word commitment. I commit to have this to you by 4 o'clock p.m. Thursday. And I know that if I don't, I am out of integrity with you. When I miss commitments, and I'm a human, I do that, I tell people, you know what, Frank, I told you you'd have that by today at noon. I didn't do it. I'm out of integrity with you. That's not who I want to be. And I'm going to demonstrate to you going forward that is who I am, a person of integrity. When did you hear that conversation last time? Add that conversation to your workplace or your home life or your team conversation, it changes everything. But here's the part of accountability we don't talk about. Accountability is taking personal responsibility for the outcomes of your actions, intended and unintended. You see, you do and say things and it has an impact on people and relationships. But most of us deflect. When things don't go that way, I said, so you do something and it hurts somebody's feelings. They say, you hurt my feelings. I said, well, I didn't intend to. Oh, well, that's good. Never mind. It's all right. It's good. That's, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you didn't intend it. Then it's all good. It's all good. When you hear those words from someone, other than strangling them, what do you really want to do? Personal responsibility. I did or said something, or I didn't say something, or I didn't do something that I could have done. I had an impact on you. I had an impact on this team. I had an impact on the goal. But most of us want to point to outside circumstances. Accountability is hard stuff. But it's simple. The problem with accountability is, in quotes, when you're accountable, you have to give up all the excuses. You can't blame anyone else. You can't blame any other situation. There may be other parties involved, but it's your personal responsibility and your personal integrity is at stake. And think about, would you make different decisions if you knew that your personal integrity was at stake every day? I know I do. And I'm blessed to have people in my life who I have blessed to challenge me. And as a result, I make clear commitments. And I put my integrity on the line. I talked about being actionized. Do what you say you're going to do. Do your beliefs show up in your actions? Do your values show up in your actions? They do to me. I'm going to look at what you do and I'm going to determine what you believe in, what you hold most precious, what your priorities are. Someone says, that's my priority, but I did that. I go, yeah, there's your priorities. You get to choose your priorities. You get to choose your values. You get to choose your beliefs. And it's up to you to choose to live them. Now, most of you, and probably every one of you, has heard before the old saying about, you know, the stone in the pond that creates ripples. Well, the reality is every one of you is already creating ripples. There's not a human being on this planet who doesn't create ripples. The question is, are you creating ripples on purpose? And are the ripples the ones you want to create? When you do that journaling, think about that. What ripples did I create today? Because you did every day. The choice I made a number of years ago was that I want to live life on purpose. I want to lead from a place of integrity. I want to live from a place of integrity. And I want to create ripples that represent who I really am. Authentically, vulnerably, and consistently. My invitation to every one of you is to make a choice today as to who you're committed to be. And then commit to have that person show up every minute of every day 
for the rest of your life. And imagine the possibilities in our communities, in our businesses, and in this world when a small group of people decide to make those choices and commitments. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.